Thank you, John, Caitlin, choir, and team. Good to see all of you today. Take your Bible and go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 28. You've been reading Proverbs? Okay, good, good. Hope you're through there and reading verse by verse, chapter by chapter, day by day, whatever uh, day is uh, tied to that chapter. You read 28 on 28, and so today's the 28th chapter, and I'm going to pull one verse out and deal with it this morning. And again, I want to encourage you to be back with us tonight, 530. We'll have a great family gathering time, and uh, you join me right here. Good to see all of you today. Welcome, welcome a thousandfold. Good to be here with you. Proverbs 28 and verse number 26. I'd like you to read verse 26 aloud with me. This is God's Word out of the wisdom literature of the Proverbs. Proverbs 28. Read out loud with me verse 26. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but he who walks wisely will be delivered. Fool and wisdom. As you've read through Proverbs, you're seeing these two words over and over and over. Sixty-nine times you find the word fool in the book of Proverbs. If you just go back two chapters. When you look at chapter 26, you find the word fool 11 times in the first 12 verses of the 26th chapter. 69 times throughout uh, this book. Fool. There are five different Hebrew words for fool. The one in our text today, he who trusts in his own heart is a kassel. K-E-C-I-Y-L. It means to be stubborn or arrogant. A stubborn, arrogant fool. Man that trusts in his own heart. But you know, oh, if you've read Proverbs, you're not supposed to trust your own heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen? Proverbs 3. Five and six, for many of us, our favorite uh, verses in the book of Proverbs. But when you follow your own heart, you sometimes become stubborn, arrogant, be a fool. But you trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, it's one thing to know something. It's another thing to apply and walk in wisdom. Yesterday, we had the... Uh, uh, president of the governmental prayer breakfast uh, here for our region. And every year they honor someone with the God in Government Award, and they honored my friend, our friend, P.C. Wu. P.C. is from China, moved here as a boy. Uh, his family brought him here. He moved in South Carolina, then into our region. Uh, he's famous for taking his picture with everybody. All right? Uh, every time I see him, he makes his picture with me, and he did yesterday, and uh, I stole that off of his Facebook uh, just uh, after the uh, gathering yesterday because PC, in his remarks after receiving his award, said these words, knowledge is not wisdom. I pulled out my pen, I wrote that down. I said, PC's about to help me in my sermon tomorrow. <laughs> he said, it's one thing to have your head full. That is knowledge. It is another thing to have your life full. That you take knowledge and translate it into daily activity of wisdom. Wow, there's a lot of difference in knowledge and just knowing and then in wisdom and living out and doing. Well, that's exactly what our verse is saying, that if you trust in your own heart, you're a fool, but you walk wisely, you will be delivered. So today, I want to take an overview of the book of Proverbs and look at the word wise. Walking wisely. That's what the writer says. He who walks wisely will be delivered. How that we walk in wisdom. Now, I want to be up front, be transparent, be honest. This outline is not mine. I've borrowed it. I've stolen it. I got it right out of one of our church members' books. Dr. Don Fanning handed me this a while back when you were going through Proverbs, and it's entitled, Don't Be a Fool. 
And in this book, he deals with the five words that uh, are translated fool. And then there's a little outline there about wisdom that I found. And I said, I'm going to pluck that out and I'm going to use that outline on the 28th. And it just fits us today. And I've chosen this verse. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Don't be a fool. But he who walks wisely will be delivered. How do we walk wisely? Well, Don puts an outline there and he helps me with walking in wisdom. So I'm borrowing that. He doesn't mind because he's a member here and he loves the pastor. For 17 years, Dr. Fanning taught at Liberty University. He was the chairman of the missions department at Liberty. He's from Pensacola. He traveled the world. He is great with Spanish. And he now works for East West Ministries and preaches all over Latin America, does a lot of work in Cuba. Now, uh, but he does some work here and travels all around the world. And so when he moved to Pensacola, Vernon Whaley told him, he said, if you're going to be in the will of God, you have to join Olive Baptist Church. And Vernon's not always right, but he was that day. And uh, Don and his sweet wife came to be a part of our church, and he's given me all of his books that he writes. And uh, one of those is Don't Be a Fool, and I've been using it along uh, with Proverbs. So I'm taking Don's outline that I found over on one page, and I am exporting that as my outline today. I'm using his bones, but I put my own meat on the skeleton, all right? So we're going to look at his five things about wisdom, how you walk in wisdom, and then I'll apply those and then give an invitation for you to come and find the key, the key to wisdom. How does one walk wisely? Well, number one, the wise are teachable, not stubborn. They are teachable, not stubborn. I'll give you some Proverbs for each one of these. Proverbs 10 and verse 14. The Word of God says, Wise men store up knowledge, but with the mouth of foolish, ruin is at hand. And then in chapter 19, in verse 20, the proverb says, Listen to counsel and accept discipline, that you may be wise the rest of your days. Listen to counsel. Accept the discipline. Don't be stubborn. Be teachable. That's the reason God gave you two ears and one tongue. You ought to be listening more than you're talking. He that has ears to hear, let him listen. Friend, there's wisdom around you if you just shut up long enough to listen to it. But other people just got to like a fountain. There's got a da 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 Just because you think it doesn't mean you need to say it. Just because you think you need to text it doesn't need, mean you need to push sin. I get myself in trouble with that. I have fat thumbs. The rest of my fingers are skinny, but I have fat thumbs. They're just like my father's. I look down at my thumbs. I think I'm looking at my father's hands. He had wide, fat thumbs. I have those. And sometimes when I mean to hit send, I hit delete. And sometimes when I mean to hit delete, I hit send, and I get myself in trouble. Be careful. Wisdom. Those that are wise, if you're going to be a wise person, you must be teachable and not stubbornly arrogant to say, I know it all already. Well, nobody's that smart. Have your ears open. You never know when God's going to pass wisdom to you. The wise are teachable and not stubborn. Secondly, the wise are righteous and not wicked. They live right, not wickedly. Look in Proverbs 3, verse number 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And then in Proverbs 13, in verse number 5, The Bible tells us a righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man acts disgustingly and shamefully. Now, leave that verse up for just a moment. Look at it. A righteous man hates falsehood. The wicked man acts disgustingly. That word disgusting in the Hebrew uh, has an interesting turn to it. It means to stink. Stink. Sometimes when... We live, we stink. When you're wicked, you stink. 
You stink up your relationships. You stink up your house. You stink up your church. When, when you're not wise and righteous, you stink. That's the disgusting part of being arrogant or stubborn. Don't stink. I heard my mother say it once. I've heard her again and again. That young man is stinking thinking. I said, what's that mean? She says, you stink. The way you think, you stink. And you're stinking up everything around you. So stop it. I said, yes, ma'am. I, I, I guess I am. You, you see, be very careful. When you walk in vile wickedness, you, you bring an odor with you. That's disgusting. And it's shameful. But the wise are not that way. They walk in righteousness. Number three, the wise are humble and not proud. The three Proverbs I want you to see here. That man who's full of wisdom walks in humility, not in pride. Proverbs 15 in verse 33. The fear of the Lord is, uh, is the instruction for wisdom, but before honor comes humility. Now leave that one up. My wife and I reading through, uh, as you are, and I read with my wife. Sometimes she'll read, sometimes I read, sometimes we listen on the phone. I'll put it on and say, well, let's let this other voice go. We'll just read through it, listen to it. Well, when we came to chapter 15, verse 33, she was reading, and you get to this last verse, and she said, I think of you when I read Proverbs 15, 33. I said, which part? She said, before honor comes humility. And I think I was being encouraged, but I wasn't sure. I said, what do you mean by that? She said, well, you just come to mind because we've walked through some hard days. And, and when we walk through the hard days, you, you have to walk in humility. And if you learn to bow yourself, God brings honor in due time. And so I took that as a compliment. I don't know if she meant it that way, but that's the way I took it. And you walk through brokenness. You see, God breaks us. And if we respond correctly, honor comes in our life. Humility. Sometimes God has to force that into our life. Chapter 16 and verse 19 says, it's better to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. It's better to walk in humility without much than it is if you walk in pride and got worldly riches. And then in chapter 29 in verse 23, a man's pride will bring him low, but an humble spirit will obtain honor. Almost the same verse as my wife was dealing with in 1533. I've preached this topic in a sermon that I preach a lot when I'm out. Jesus' favorite verse, the only thing recorded in the Gospels three different times, I don't mean that it happened once and Matthew said it and Luke said it. No, no, no. This is three different occasions where Jesus said the same thing. And so I call it his favorite verse because it's what he said again and again. He that exalts himself will be brought low and he that humbles himself will be exalted in due time. Jesus said that three different times to three different people. He used that principle. And then I tagged it with that phrase that I use again and again, peacock today, feather duster tomorrow. And if you're a peacock and showing, strutting your feathers, the day's coming when people use that as a feather duster. In my home office, I have a prayer closet and there is a little altar built for me by Mr. J. Gentry. He was a deacon the First Baptist Church in Henrietta, Texas, my first church out of seminary. When I left to go to Garland before coming here, then in just three years, he brought this altar by my house and said, Pastor, I'll give a gift to you. And he said, as you leave us, I want to remind you, stay on your knees. 
stay on your knees. And so I have that little altar, and it's covered with carpet here, and comes up, it's got a little place to put your Bible in the rack and rest your elbows. And every time I kneel there, I've got a lot of scriptures and pictures and various things I look at, but one is just to my left, right down at the bottom. It's a picture that a lady in this church made for me. It's a framed peacock feather. And on that, she is inscribed, Peacock today, feather duster tomorrow. And as I kneel, I always look at that and I think, Lord, help us. Help us remember that the wise people walk with humility, not with pride. Be very careful. Because when you exalt, you exalt yourself, the day's coming, God will humble you. But if you'll walk in humility, God will in due time raise you to that rightful place that only His grace can give. He rewards that humility. The humble spirit will obtain honor. The wise are humble. They are not proud. Fourthly, the wise are... Mm. Self-control. It's that last virtue of the Holy Ghost and the fruits of the Spirit. And the wise are self-controlled, not rash. Self-control rather than rash. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 17 in verse 27. He who restrains his words has knowledge. He who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. <laughs> A cool spirit. Chapter 29, verse 11, A fool always loses his temper, but a wise man holds it back. Oh, I wanted to be a basketball coach. I can't hardly watch basketball. Very difficult. I played for a man who taught me to cuss. High school. He made up cuss words I'd never heard. Sometimes I think he just made them up on the spot. No, oh, my goodness, how he taught me just by practice. And I could illustrate what he would demonstrate. But you know, a fool is the one that loses his temper. But wise man holds it back. I watched a basketball coach yesterday get a technical. I can read lips on television, can't you? Yeah. He... he uh, that coach jumped up, and it cost him. He, he called that referee male cow dung. That's what he said to him. He used different words. His team was ahead before he said that. After he said that, he was behind. They had foul shots and technicals and then got the ball and scored again. And I thought, wow, you nayball you. That's one of the words for fool. You find it in 1 Samuel 25. If you've never read 1 Samuel 25, put that in your notes, and when you get home, read the 25th chapter of 1 Samuel. There's a man there named Nabal, N-A-B-A-L, and he is a wealthy man. He's a rash man. He's a mean man. He's got many cattle, sheep, and David's shepherds go and help him. And after they help him, they come to him and say, could you just bless us? Nabal says, no, get out of here. When David hears about it, David's upset. And he draws the sword. He said, we're going to kill him. But Nabal's wife is Abigail. She hears what David is about to do, and she loads her animal with gifts and goes to David and bows and says, Oh, please do not do this to my husband. And David finds kindness, and he does not. But listen to what Abigail said about her husband. Please do not let my Lord pay attention to this worthless man. 
That's her husband. Do not let my Lord pay attention to this worthless man, Nabal, N-A-B-A-L. That's one of the five words for foo. His mama named him foo. For his, listen to what she said. His name, 1 Samuel 25, 25. His name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. Please excuse. Mm. And David does. And she goes home and he's drunk. And the next day God turns his heart to stone. Ten days later he's dead and David marries Abigail. First Samuel 25. There's a whole motion picture just waiting to be made in First Samuel 25. She named him. His mother named him Foo says, because as his name is, so is he. Listen, your, your name may not be fool, but as your name is the name you have in this community, so are you. When people see you, you have a name. I don't mean Ted or Tom, Roger or Harlan. I, I mean you have a testimony, if you will. And when they see you, you are as your name is. And your testimony is either wisdom or folly. Which one are you? The wise are self-controlled, not rash. And the only way you have self-control is for the Spirit of God to control your life. Number five, the wise are forgiving, not vindictive. Forgiving, not vindictive. Proverbs 19 and verse 11. A man's discretion makes him slow to anger. And it's his glory to overlook a transgression. Uh, when people do you wrong, and everybody in this room has been done wrong. Everybody, everyone else has been done wrong. Uh, are you quick to balance the books? Or do you find glory in overlooking a transgression? The wise are forgiving. They're not vindictive. Proverbs 20, verse 22. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord. He'll save you. Let me tell you, God's better getting even than you are. And in due time, he deals with that. I, I remember my mother. She took that Old Testament verse that's found in the New Testament in Ephesians. I'd want to get even, I'd get angry. And she said, don't do that. I said, why? She said, let God handle it. I said, well, he's awful slow. <laughs> she said, he's right on time. She said, when you show kindness to those that have done you wrong, you heap coals of fire upon their head. That's what the Word of God said. I said, well, what's that mean? She said, God can burn them better than you can. Leave it, leave it, leave it to hell. I said, Mom, I want it right now. She said, well, you go right ahead and be fool if you want to. She said, God has a better way than you have. If you show kindness, you will heap coals of fire on their head. Hmm. Jesus had a lot to say about that. He said, when a man slaps you on one side of your face, you turn his, right? No. He said, you turn yours. Slap you on the right side, give him the left. Jesus went on to say, that's what we know best about that text. But he said, if he sues you and wants your shirt, give him your coat also. And he said, if he makes you like a slave, he, he makes you carry his load for a mile. Don't just go one, go two. The wise are forgiving, not vindictive. Peter wasn't really good at this. You remember chapter 18 of Matthew's gospel? I mean, Peter's checking his mind. How long do I have to forgive? Seven times? Hmm. Jesus said, try 70 times. 490? If you're counting, you've missed the truth of the whole passage. 
It's perfection time, perfection time, perfection. It's endless. Because that's the way of Jesus. Just, just look to the cross. That's 70 times 7 forgiveness right there. Amen. What a Savior. And the wise are like Him. To be forgiving and not vindic. You've been hurt. Everybody in here has been hurt. Somebody's done you wrong. They've lied to you. They've said something about you or about your family or somewhere. I mean, everybody's been done. That's you and you and you, me, my family, your family. Everybody, you, if you don't have to live long to be done wrong. So you're going to be like Jesus or a fool. You're going to be wisdom or folly. It's up to you. Forgiveness is not trusting again. They may do it again. I'm not telling you, turn you back. Don't be silly. But you don't hold that grudge. You give it to God. Well, you say, preacher, those five things are good. And I say, yeah, they are. But how do you do it? Where does wisdom come from? Well, here's the key. If you want wisdom, get Jesus. All through the Word of God, Jesus said Himself in Luke eleven forty nine, 49, My words are wisdom. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 24, Jesus is wisdom. Then in Colossians 2 and verse 3, the Bible says, In Christ are the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's in Christ that you find the treasure trove of wisdom. You can't do it. You're not man or woman enough to do it. We're not that good. But it's Christ in us and through us. That is the fountain of wisdom. That's the treasure trove of wisdom. It's, it's Jesus is the power through us. So get to know him. He wrote you a book. Read his book. That's why I've been trying to get you to read Proverbs all month. You find a fountain of wisdom. Read the book. Spend time in prayer. Hang out with others in a small group. A connection group would be a good place to start that. I've been gone. Liz and I took a trip, went to Panama Canal and had a great time, learned so much. I'd read historically, you know, the French tried to do that and they failed, said, we can't do it. And Teddy Roosevelt said, well, I know the French can't do it, but the Americans can do it. Yeah. And he did. Over 5,000 people died. Malaria, difficulty. What a place. Uh, I learned a great deal on that trip as we went through to go through the canal. So I came back yesterday. My mail was this high. The last cruise I went on, we took Beth and Jim Harry. She wasn't here to open my mail. So it was just all piled up waiting on me. So I went through the mail. Most of it junk. But then I read a letter from a family that said, we're leaving the church. We can't get connected. And so take our names off the roll we're n not here anymore. And I fold that up, put it in, I'll deal with that. I picked up the next letter. It was from a lady in the church. She said, Pastor, my husband died. My connection group took care of me. They paid bills. They brought food. They've been by my side. She said, I don't know what I'd do without Olive Baptist Church. I don't know what I'd do 
without my connection group. So that letter that they don't want us anymore, I put it and filed it over there in the round can. I'll write a note back. But this one I took and put in my book of letters I keep. Handwritten, shaky, just scrawled out with an ink pen on some green paper. You can't buy that. My church took care of me. I'll let you on a little secret. You know the difference in those two? This bunch over here couldn't get connected. They didn't do much for other people. This lady over here, she'd been doing for other people and sowing all those seeds all this time, and now the harvest is just coming up. Wisdom, folly. Which one are you? Don't waste your life. Chase Jesus. Let him be in you. And he'll go through you. And that wisdom will pour out like a treasure trove. Just when you need the right word, you'll find it in his book. Why I've been reading. A guy sent me a text yesterday, and it was negative about not about the church. He's not even a church member. He just tell me it's negative and all. I thought I'm not going to respond to that. Then I was reading, and I got a word. I wrote him back, and I said I would quote. And I quoted the lady from 1856. I'd been reading after her. And she said, It would seem that God could find some virtuous people to run the affairs of the nation. Where are all the virtuous people? <laughs> I sent that back to him. I said, Well, maybe God will raise up some virtuous people. That's why I got on my Texas cufflinks today. Yes, I do. If people from a country that snuck in our nation live next door to you, you love them in Jesus' name. I mean you love them. But close the window. As Sean Pillay said at the immigration this week, you can either come in the door or sneak in the window. There's only one way to rightfully get in this nation is come through the door. You don't sneak in the window. But if somebody sneaks in the window and they're next to you, then you be Jesus to them. It's the wisdom way. It's the God way. And let the Lord sort all that out. And then ask God to put virtuous people in the right place to make the right decisions at the right time. And support those people that do those things. That's all I got to say about that.